This is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Most High in Christ. Bless. This is 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Amaziah. Officer Josiah. And with me today, I have Officer Josiah. So the topic for today, we're going to smash another Christian lie. We are going to go with Romans 1 and 16. So the Jew first, then the Greek. What is it talking about? Let's get it. Romans 1 and 16. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Uh -huh. To the Jew first. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. To the Jew first, then to the Greek. Let's go to the second Maccabees 6 and 6. Who's that talking about? These Greeks. Is it Caucasians? Is it... Is it uh, everybody in Greece? Is it everybody uh, uh, of just Caucasians and Jews? Is that who salvation is for? That's what, the Bi that's what the Bible just said, right? Greeks. When you think of Greeks, black Christians think of Edomites, Idumians, Esau, Caucasians. Let's see. Come on. Second Maccabees 6 and 6. Second Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 6. Read. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. It wasn't lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. So what are we reading about? The Maccabees, okay? We're in the book of Second Maccabees, the Apocrypha. What was taken out of the King James Version Bible, okay? There's the Greek captivity. What happened in the Greek captivity? We're going to read about it. Go ahead. Or ancient feasts. Read. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So there was a time when you couldn't be called Jews in the Greek captivity. Read on. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint. We were forced. To eat of the sacrifices. Read. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, uh -huh. the Jews were compelled to go into into to go in procession to Bacchus, Read. carrying ivy. That's your bacchanal today, your carnivals. Go ahead. Moreover, there went out a decree. There went out a law to the neighboring cities of the heathen. Read. By the suggestion of Ptolemy Read. against the Jews. This was against the Jews. That they should observe the same fashions. The, the, those he, na, neighboring cities should observe the same fashions. You should be Greeks too, like me. And be partakers of their sacrifices. Read. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Remember, this is the Greek captivity. And if you do not do, if you do not conform to the manner of the Gentiles, which Gentiles? The Greeks, the Greeks, the Greeks. Come on. Should be put to death. You're going to die. If you don't be a Greek, you're going to die. You don't keep your sacrifice, I keep mine, you're going to die. That was the law in this time right here in the Greek captivity. We were forced, the Jews were forced to become Greeks, brothers and sisters. Go to Matthews 4.15. So the Jew first, then the Greeks. Matthew's 4.15. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 15. Let's see if Israel was ever called Greeks. The land Besides of... Besides what we just read. The land of Zebulon. Zebulon is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. The land of Zebulon. And the land of Naphtali. Naphtali. That's another tribe of Israel. One of the 12. By the way of the sea. 
beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. So what was these na- what was they calling these nations? Gentiles. Northern Kingdom was called Gentiles in the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Go now. Give me Isaiah 49 and 6. So Northern Kingdom was called Gentiles. Hmm. The Greek captivity, we were called Greeks. Okay. Let's go. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 6. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant uh-huh. to raise up the tribes of Jacob. That's our job. And to restore the preserved of Israel. That's our job too. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. To, who? to the Gentiles. This, these Gentiles are not the other nations. These Gentiles are Israelites living as Gentiles. Go ahead. That thou mayest be my salvation. Now, give me that thou mayest be my, that's it? Uh, Unto the end of the earth. You're going to be my salvation to the end of the earth. Now, give me the definition of Gentile in the Bible dictionary. What does it say? Read it nice and slow. This is the Zonovan Compact Bible Dictionary. Read the first word, nice, slow, and loud. Gentiles. Uh Uh-huh. Usually. What? Usually. What? Usually, usually, it means a non-Israelite people. It says usually it means a non-Israelite people. So, there's some times that it is used for the Israelites, brothers and sisters. That's what the, that's what the definition is. Usually, it means it's a non-Israelite people. What does that mean? Well, sometimes that, these Gentiles are talking about Israelites. That's what that means. Now, give me Matthew 10 and 5. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. To the Jew first. Okay. Let's see what it says. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying. Now, these 12, the 12 disciples, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying what? Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Wait a minute. He said what? Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't go to the Gentiles. What Gentiles? The Israelites living as Gentiles. Northern kingdom, brothers and sisters. Northern kingdom, the northern tribes. Read. And into any city of the Samaritans. The Samaritans are Israelites. Enter ye not. Don't go to northern kingdom. Don't go to them. Go ahead. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. At this time, it's talking about southern kingdom, brothers and sisters. That's who he's talking about. There's more? Uh, no, sir. Go verse 7. Verse 7. And as he go. And as you go teaching, north, teaching southern kingdom. Preach, saying. Preach to them. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Tell southern kingdom, get your minds right. Get it right. Why did Christ have to do that? Let's go to the prophecy, Zechariah 12 and 7. Let's see what the prophecy is. Let's go to the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, and verse 7. Come on. Zechariah, chapter 12, and verse 7. Read. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Lord's going to do what? Shall save the tents of Judah first. Last. First. After Northern Kingdom. First. That's the prophecy, brothers and sisters. The Lord is going to save the tents of Judah first. Judah's going to be the ones to wake up first. Okay, go ahead. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. That the glory of the house of David and the house of, the house of David and the glory of Jerusalem don't magnify themselves against Judah. Give me Acts 13, 45. Let's go a little, let's walk this dog a little further. So the, the prophecy is Judah's gonna, gonna wake up first. Acts chapter 13 and verse 45. Read. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, uh-huh. they were filled with envy. What Jews? You're talking about the southern kingdom here. Southern kingdom, the Jews. In Paul's letter, Jews represents the southern kingdom. Okay, the Gentiles represent what? The northern kingdom. We just read about it in 2 Maccabees 6 and 6. That's how they became 
Greeks. Okay, go ahead. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, uh-huh. contradicting and blaspheming. Southern kingdom contradicts and blasphemy. The, the elders, the scribes, Pharisees, and so forth. Go ahead. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold Read. and said, Read. It was necessary that the word of God should first be spoken to you. Should first be sp- It was necessary that we came to the southern kingdom first. Why? Because the prophecy in Zechariah 12 and 7, I'm going to go to southern kingdom first. The tents of Judah first. Read. But seeing he put it from you. Uh Uh-oh. Now you put it from you. You don't want to hear it. You hard-headed. You stiff-necked. And judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. You judge yourself unworthy of this truth. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. We're going to southern. We're going to northern kingdom, man. We can't deal with y'all southern kingdom dudes. Y'all think y'all know too much. You're too damn smart, okay? So that's the prophecy. Where did he get that from? Zechariah 12 and 7. That's where Paul got it. John 11 and 49. Now let's go to the, let's go to the Messiah. Let's see what the Messiah did. John 11 and 49. We're going to read all the way to 54. John chapter 11 and verse 49. And one of them named Caiaphas being the high priest that same year, said unto them, uh-huh. Ye know nothing at all. You know nothing at all. Talking to the, the Pharisees and scribes, the chief priests. Go ahead. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that no that one man should die for the people. So Caiaphas is telling the, the scribes and the, the elders and the leaders, it's expedient, it's good for us that one man die. And that the whole nation perish not. That it's better for him to die that the whole nation don't perish. Go ahead. And this spake he not of himself. He's not talking of himself. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. He prophesied that Christ should die for that nation. Let's say if that, let's say that talk about the entire nation of Israel. And not for that nation only. Uh-oh. Not for that nation only, brothers and sisters. But that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Who's that talking about? Northern kingdom. The children of God scattered abroad. That's northern kingdom right there. That nation in in verse 51, that's southern kingdom. 52, that's northern kingdom. Read on. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. You You see how wicked our people was? Go ahead. Jesus, therefore, walked no more openly among the Jews. Wait, 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 he did what? Walked no more openly among the Jews. He's not dealing with Southern Kingdom no more. He's out. He ain't dealing with you no more. But, but then into a country near to the wilderness into, into a city called Ephraim. A city called what? Ephraim. Northern Kingdom, brothers and sisters. That's Northern Kingdom. Okay? He left Southern Kingdom and said, I'm out. These drug dudes trying to kill me. I'm going to go see Northern Kingdom. I'm going to go deal with them. Give me Deuteronomy 33 and 7. Let's see the blessing. The blessing of Judah. Deuteronomy 33 and 7. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 7. Read. And this is the blessing of Judah. This is the blessing of Judah. Go ahead. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. So the, he says, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. And bring him unto his people. And do what? And bring him unto his people. So in order for you to bring Judah unto his people, Judah has to be given the word first. 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 Judah has to wake up first. And bring him unto his people means what? He's going to teach his people. He's going to teach the other tribes, the other 11. Okay, go ahead. Let his hands be sufficient for him. He says, let his hand, let Judah's hands be sufficient for him. Help Judah. How does Judah have help? Well, he has Benjamin and Levi, the darker tribes you could say, per se, okay? That make up what? The southern kingdom. Let his hands be sufficient for him. Because primarily, what do you see? You see uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi waking up. And now what you see as you, we go on in years, we see more northern kingdom brothers and sisters beginning to wake up. So we are here to, Judah and, ben, Judah and uh, excuse me, Benjamin and Levi are held here to help Judah, okay? Those three tribes, southern kingdom, doing what? Waking up the 12, okay? Particularly 
northern kingdom now beginning to wake up. Read it again. Verse 7, Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 7. And this is the blessing of Judah. Read. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah uh -huh. and bring him unto his people. Bring him unto his people. He's going to wake up his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him. Let his hands be sufficient for him. And be thou in help to him from his enemies. He's going to have help from Benjamin and Levi to help push this truth to who? Northern kingdom. Northern kingdom, brothers and sisters. Now, give me Romans 1.16 again. Romans 1.16. Now we should have the thought. Now we should have a clear understanding to the Jew first, then the Greek. Because guess what? If you say the Greek is just talking about Edomites, well, where is the African in that? Where is the East Indian in that verse? It's because salvation, according to Christianity, is for the Jew and the Greek. Well, where is the Chinese man in that? Where's the East Indian man? Where's the Arab man? It's just for the Jew and the Greek, that's it? Doesn't make sense, brothers and sisters. Let's go. Romans 1, 16. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Read. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto what? Unto salvation. Uh-huh. To everyone that believeth. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Go to John 4, 22. To the Jew first. Hmm. Let's see what Christ says, the Messiah. John chapter 4 and verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. You don't know what you worshiping, brothers and sisters. We talking to who? He's talking to Northern Kingdom right here. Go ahead. We know what we worship for salvation. Salvation. Remember, we just read about salvation in, in, in uh, Romans 1.16. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is to the Jew. To the Jew first. Jump up to verse 20 to, to prove she's northern kingdom. Verse 20. Start at 19. Verse 19. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Read. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Our fathers. Our fathers. She said, me and your fathers worshipped in this mountain. That's what she just said. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Okay? Whose fathers? Our Israel, all to get all 12 worshiped in this mountain. Go ahead. And he say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Uh huh. Ye worship, ye know not what. Uh huh. We know what we worship. Uh huh. For salvation, salvation is, is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews. Now go back. Let's read it again one more time. Romans 1 16. One more time. Romans. Now we should have a clear understanding. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto salvation, and salvation is of the Jews. To everyone that believeth. Whether you're northern kingdom, southern kingdom, whether you call yourself a Jew, whether you call yourself a Greek, whether you call yourself circumcision or uncircumcision. To the Jew first. To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. So all praise to the Most High, brothers and sisters. That is 15 minutes with the captains. I pray you learn something. I'm Captain Amaziah. Officer Josiah. And we say shalom. shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.